Hey guys, it's Nate here. Today I thought we would do a walkthrough of a brand new data science interview question that I just got from Twitch. I think it's actually a great question because it's relevant for both interviews as well as questions that you'd get on the job. And it covers some advanced techniques that we're gonna be covering in this video. So let's walk through this question, but let's walk through it like I'm the interviewee so that I can lay out my step-by-step -step approach to solve this problem. So what I'm going to do is introduce this framework as I'm solving this problem. You can use this framework to solve any question, whether or not you're on an interview or on your day job. So let's introduce this question on the other side of the transition. These questions are pretty new to when this video was released. So there's a good chance that these interview questions are still being asked at the company. So in this case at Twitch, but if it isn't, you can certainly bet that these technical concepts are still being tested on on their data science interviews. All right, so let's get started. If you like this type of content, please subscribe to my channel. All right, so see you at the other side of the transition. Thanks. All right, so this data science interview questions by Twitch, it reads viewers turn streamers. The question is from users who had their first session as a viewer, how many streamer sessions had they had? So this is a simple question as it's worded, uh, but it has a hard difficulty. So let's see why it's hard. All right, so as an interviewee, somebody being interviewed, the first thing I'd do is reiterate the question back to the interviewer. So for this question, I'd actually say something like, to confirm, we're trying to find how many streamer sessions a user has had. And a user in this case is defined as somebody that had their first session as a viewer. Is that correct? So if the interviewer then agrees, then the next step is to establish your assumptions about the data and the definitions, and then you can start coding. And it's important to reiterate the question back to the interviewer, uh, especially in a different way, mainly just to get aligned with the interviewer so that they understand the question and you understand the question. So the next step is to take a look at the data schema. So in terms of the data schema, we have a table called Twitch sessions. We have the user ID, the session start and end times, the session ID and the session type. So an assumption that I would have for the interviewer is essentially defining session type. My assumption is that session type is a way to differentiate between a viewer and a streamer. So basically viewer would be the value for viewer and streamer would be the value in session type for a streamer. I would essentially ask the interviewer if that's correct or not. So that's one assumption. Another follow-up question I can have is whether or not there are other session types that I need to filter out in my solution. If there are not, there are only two session types, right? Streamers and viewers, and potentially my solution has become a little bit easier to, to code up. So a second assumption that I might have is that every record or every row in the table corresponds to a unique session. And, there, and there's also a unique session ID. So why is this important? Because if uniqueness is established, then I'm not gonna have to group by or aggregate any of the data. I can treat every row, every record in the table essentially as a session. This makes my work a lot easier. So the third assumption that I would have is that the data is generally clean, meaning that we can assume that there is a session start and end date for every session there is, for every row in the data table. So why is this important? It again would just make things easier if we can just assume that. If not, then that's fine. We would have to deal with edge cases of missing start times or end times or whatever it is. Um, and we would have to handle those in the solution. So it makes the solution much more difficult when you just don't have the data to really keep things clean. So those are the three assumptions I have for this data. And the most important part really is to have a conversation with the interviewer to establish these three assumptions because they're really important in terms of figuring out how to write your code so that you are able to answer this question. All right, now, because we have the data, let's look at the data itself so that we can confirm all of our assumptions. So I'm just gonna click this preview button here and then view the output in a separate tab. So uh, assumption one here is essentially verified. Session type is either streamer or viewer. The data is generally clean, as you can see here, and um, every session ID 
is unique. So every row in this table is a session itself. And we have start times and end times for every single session. Okay, so now at this point, we've established the assumptions and we verified them. Okay, so now the next step before I even start coding is to basically write down all of the logic that I'm gonna use in my code. So this is what it's gonna look like. Um, I'm gonna just basically use this editor as a notepad, but you could do the same during an interview. So the logic is essentially um, how I'm going to solve the problem or how I'm gonna basically structure my code in steps. So the first step is to identify users that had their first session as a viewer, because once we have that, we can count the sessions. What we wanna do is rank by session start times because this will give us the correct ordering. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to return a table with the user ID, the session type, and the rank. So the second step is to filter the first session by viewer. And then lastly, to polish it off, what we wanna do is order by number of sessions, then by user ID. So what I would do, I would run through these steps write it out just like I did and explain it to the interviewer. If they agree to this logic, then what you can do is start coding up the solution. Why is this important? Well, it's important because you want to make sure that all of the logic is correct um, and that the interviewer is basically agreeing to the logic that you're about to implement in your solution. Basically, it's just a, a check to make sure that everything is going great. Right. What's also typically introduced in this section of the interview are basically theoretical technical questions that the interviewer can ask you. For example, this right here, let's rank by session start times. The interviewer might ask you like what function are you going to use to actually rank or how are you going to actually rank? And in this case, I'm going to be using a window function and I'm going to be using the rank function, in which case the interviewer can then ask me what, what is the rank function? How does it actually work? And how is it different than other ranking functions like end tile or dense rank? But I think really the most important part of this exercise is to establish that your logic is correct and that the interviewer is signing off on that logic before you start writing any code. All right, so once that's established, let's start writing code. So the first step is to identify users that have had their first session as a viewer. So really the first step into doing this is to rank the sessions by their start times, right? So we want to really order the sessions by the start times by user ID. So what we're gonna need to do is actually implement a window function and use a ranking function on top of that. So the code would look like this. Essentially, we have the user ID, we have the session type so that we can differentiate between streamers and viewers. And then we have this window function here where we're going to take the rank and then we will uh, partition by user ID and then order by the session type because we want uh, the first session first and then the last session last. Okay. Um, here we're going to be using ranking or rank. It doesn't really matter if you want to use rank or dense rank or anything like that because there's not going to be much difference. And in this section right here, we're using rank. Um, you could really use dense rank if you want. What you're gonna have to do is probably explain why you're using rank rather than dense rank, rather than any other function to get the ordering and ranking that way. And then explain the nuances between these functions. That's probably the most important thing, most important part of the interview itself. So let's just actually run this query here to see what we get. And as I scroll down, what you see is essentially partitions by user, right? We have the user ID here. We have their session type, which will be helpful later. And then we have the ordering of the sessions. The stream order is what I'm calling it. So one, two, and three um, is basically what I have. And all I'm really trying to do is just sort the sessions and figure out whether or not this user was a streamer or a viewer during their first session. So now that I have all of this information here, what I wanna use is this view to then pick ranking equals one, which is streams order is one like here and here. And I want to pick out users that were viewers in their first stream because that's what the question is asking for, right? We want 
um, the session type to be viewer and we want the ranking to be one. So in order to do that, I'm going to use a subquery on this query query right here. So now my previous query is now a subquery and I have a stream order equals one. I'm picking out just their first session and I'm making sure that the session type is a viewer. So these users were viewers in their first session. All right. So if I run this code, I get the user IDs that meet this criteria. So I can just double check. I'm going to put a star here. And what I have are two users where their first session, they were viewers, all right? So I know that's correct. So I'm gonna switch back to just outputting or returning their user ID, just like I did here. So that was the hard part. So now that I have the user IDs that meet this criteria here, so now what I wanna do is count the number of streamer sessions these users have. So what I can do here is use this query in the where clause to, to accomplish what I want to accomplish. So what I'm going to do is select the user ID and then perform a count on basically the sessions, the number of sessions, and I'm just gonna call this n sessions from the main table twitch sessions and then I'm going to implement a where clause where I'm saying where the user ID is in this list and this list is basically the query that I that I wrote right the users in this list is one and three and the last piece of logic is that the session type needs to be streamer okay and so what we want to do now is just group by the user ID. So I'm just going to group by one. And then the last step is to order by the number of sessions in descending order, but also the user ID in ascending order. So if I run this entire query here, we essentially get the user IDs and the number of sessions that they've had where they were streamers. Okay, so that's what you would code up with the interviewer. In this case, what I wanna do is just check the solution to see if, it's, if I got it right and my solution is correct. Okay, so now that the most stressful part of the interview is over, you're essentially done, right? Not quite. So typically there are always follow-up questions and a very popular one is, can you optimize this code, right? Because as you are coding and trying to code while also explaining the code to the interviewer, there's probably a lot of inefficiencies that you're baking into your solution. So that's why the question about code optimization is often asked. And oftentimes interviewers like to ask these types of questions because it tests your theoretical knowledge about what SQL is actually doing in the back end, right? And the theory is actually really important because as you're dealing with millions, if not billions of rows, how you manipulate data, how you write code and how efficiently you do it really affects runtime. Okay, so uh, that's a big reason why these types of questions are asked. So the number one thing I look for if a question like this is being asked is essentially if I can collapse or combine any of the subquery CTEs that I have. And I have one right here, or I have several right here where I have a subquery here, and then I have another subquery, and then I have the main query so I have like three layers here, right? And that's that's a lot of runtime. It could take up a lot of time if I have big tables. Is it necessary to have three? So the first thing I'm doing here is sorting the session times, right? To, to get an understanding of just the ranking of things. And from that, then I'm getting the user ID. And then from that, I'm filtering based off of the stream order and then the session type viewer. The thing is I need to have both of these subqueries here because I need to first get the streaming order using this rank function before I can actually apply the stream order or just pick out the first session from every user and then return the user ID. So I have to have that. And then of course I have to have an aggregate here where I'm actually counting the number of sessions by user ID. So all three queries are actually necessary for me to actually complete and solve this question. So there's really nothing I can do to really collapse or reduce the number of subqueries that I have. But what I can do is turn Turn this into either a CTE as another way to write it. That way I can um, essentially have different like ordering and it just it's it's more readable. I can also change this into a temp table or change certain parts of this query into temp tables 
because then I can actually reuse the same logic in other queries and I can take advantage of the indexing capabilities of temp tables, which would make the runtime much faster in this solution. So that's sort of the conversation that I would have with the interviewer to show them that I actually know the theoretical aspects or concepts of writing good SQL code. So that's basically it for this interview question. That's kind of how I would go about the interview in terms of a step-by-step -step approach and a framework that I would use from start to finish in terms of answering this question. So you can use this framework and apply to really about any other data science interview question, coding question that you get. What's really important is reiterating your question, discussing assumptions about the data, about the question itself, then walking through the logic of how you're going to actually solve the question before even writing a single line of code and then coding while explaining what you're doing. That's sort of the hard part there as well. And then after that, answering all of the follow-up questions that the interviewer has. Typically, the interviewer might have a lot of questions on SQL theory or you know whatever language you're using, Python theory, so that they have an understanding of how good you really are and how well of an understanding you have uh, in terms of the coding language that you're using. So what's hard about this? Um, I think the entire process is really hard and it's stressful and it's nerve wracking. It's really hard to communicate eloquently through the entire process. It's hard to think on your feet, um, especially when you're seeing the question for the first time. And then it's obviously really hard to just come up with a solution on the fly, right? You need a lot of practice to get better. The more practice you have, the easier it is for you to see the solutions and identify the solutions as you are being introduced to the question. For example, was it obvious to you to use a window function, to use this partition by and ranking function to get to your solution? The more practice you have, the more obvious the solution will be. Okay, that's it for me today. Check out my other walkthroughs on my channel if you want more tips with how to solve these interview questions. And again, if you like this type of content, please subscribe to this channel. All right, so until next time, guys, bye.